Hello viewers, in this video lecture, today we are going to talk about massive open online course on emerging technologies in renewable energy sources. Name of the subject domain is biomass energy and today we are going to discuss biomass conversion technologies. So viewers, here are the important topics which will be discussed in this video. The first biomass power, then next market of biomass power, origin of biomass, what is biomass, biomass sources biomass conversion process, advantage and disadvantages. So let us start from the introduction. Biomass has always been an important energy source for the country considering the benefits it offers. It is renewable, widely available, carbon neutral and has the potential to provide significant employment in the rural areas. Biomass is also capable of providing firm energy. It's about 32% of the total primary energy use in the country is still derived from biomass and more than 70% of the country population depends upon it for its energy needs. Ministry of New and Renewable Energy has realized the potential and role of biomass energy in the Indian context and hence has initiated a number of programs for promotion of efficient technologies for its use in various sectors of the economy to ensure derivation of maximum benefits. For efficient utilization of biomass, biogas based co-generation in sugar mill and biomass power generation have been taken up under biomass power and co-generation program also. So, biomass power and co-generation program is implemented with the main objective of promoting technologies for optimum use of country biomass resource for grid power generation. Biomass material used for power generation include bagasse, rice husk, straw, cotton stock, coconut shell, soya husk, de-oiled, cakes, coffee waste, jute waste, ground nuts, shell, shaw dust, etc. So now let us understand what is the potential of this biogas. As per the recent study sponsored by MNRE, the current availability of biomass in India is estimated at about 750 million metric tons per year. The study indicated estimated surplus biomass availability at about 230 million metric tons per annum covering agricultural residues corresponding to a potential of about 28 gigawatt. This apart, about 20, 14 gigawatt additional power could be generated through biogas based cogeneration in the country's 550 sugar mills. If these sugar mills were to adopt technically and economically, optimal levels of co-generation for extracting power from the bag assay produced by them. Bioenergy is a source of energy from the organic material that makes up plants known as biomass. Biomass contains carbon absorbed by plant through photosynthesis. When the biomass is used to produce energy, the carbon is released during combustion and simply returns to the atmosphere. And it making modern bioenergy a promising near zero emission fuel. Modern bioenergy is the largest source of renewable energy globally. It's accounting for 55% of renewable energy and over 6% of global energy supply. The net zero emission by 2050 scenario sees a rapid increase in the use of bioenergy to displace fossil fuels by 2030. The use of modern bioenergy has increased on average by about 7% per year between 2010 and 2021 and is on an upward trend. More efforts are needed to accelerate modern energy deployment to get on track with the net zero scenario, which sees deployment increase by 10% per year between 2021 and 2030, which simultaneously ensuring that bioenergy product does not incur negative social and environmental consequences. Bioenergy is an important pillar of decarbonization in the energy transition as a near zero emission fuel. Bioenergy is useful because there is a flexibility in the context and sector it can be used in. It forms solid bioenergy and biogas combusted for power and heat in homes and industrial plant to liquid biofuels and it used in cars, ships and airplanes. Furthermore, it can often take advantage of existing infrastructure. For instance, biomethane can use existing natural gas pipelines and end user equipment while many drop in liquids biofuels can use existing oil distribution network and be used in vehicle with only minor alterations. Now let us understand generation and installation capacity of biomass power. The government of India has set an ambitious target of 175 gigawatt 
renewable power install capacity by the end of 2022, therefore making it one of the most progressive renewable energy policies in the world. This target aims to install a total of 10 gigawatt worth of bioenergy capacity. India's bioenergy potential is tremendously high and driven largely by overpopulation and vast agricultural pastures. Experts estimate peg this at a lot of 25 gigawatt. India is one of the biggest economics with a growing population, big capacities of field and plantation, big biomass industrial, biomass forest, biomass waste and aquatic biomass. In addition, the demand for electricity is growing every year due to economic growth, increasing prosperity and urbanization, rise in per capita consumption and massive rural electrification infrastructure. Another critical factor to consider is that India is highly dependent on crude oil imports with an approximate 82% of total crude oil imports used to fulfill the domestic consumption demand which makes this susceptible to price shocks due unforeseen escalation in crude oil prices. Therefore, it seems to be only logical to combine the potential in bioenergy as a cheaper, greener source of power with the increasing demand for electricity across the country. Bioenergy so far is especially prominent in rural India since agriculture residue such as straw and cow dung are easily available. As per the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, about 32% of the total primary energy use in the country is derived from biomass and more than 70% of the country's population in one year or the other depends upon it for their energy needs in the rural regions. What is global market of biomass power? The global biomass power market size was valued at USD 121340.76 million in 2021 and is projected to exhibit a compound annual growth rate of 6% from 2022 to 2030. The market has been witnessed growth with the rise in environmental concern which has forced various countries to increase the share of renewable energy in their power mix. Countries such as India, China, Germany, UK and France has announced renewable energy targets and aiming at becoming carbon neutral nations in the future. Moreover, rising adoption owing to favorable policies and regulations drives the market. Furthermore, the European Union countries are looking for a coal phase out which is expected to boost the demand for biomass power. In addition, in countries such as the US, India and China, co-firing of coal based power plant is done with biomass feedstock to limit carbon emission from the plants. These factors will boost the growth of the market in the forecast period. The, U the US, the witnessed biomass power capacity addition of 177 megawatt in 2019 through 14 projects. The new projects commissioned in 2019 was done in locations such as Florida, Georgia, California and Hawaii. Furthermore, over 384 megawatt of biomass power projects are under different deployment phase in the country. These factors are anticipated to boost the market growth in the country over the forecast period. The US and Canada dominate the North America region market. The North America region is majority dependent on the coal for power generation. The recent discovery of shell gas reserve in the region has resulted in gas based power generation which is gaining higher growth over coal based power generation in the region in the past decade. Installers and system providers usually hold stock of major, major equipment in inventory. However, manufacturers face bottleneck and shortage owing to limited production in countries during the COVID-19 crisis. Furthermore, upcoming biomass power projects witness delay in commissioning due to the disruption in the supply chain and half on on-site construction activities caused by the imposition of lockdowns in severely affected areas now we can move on the technologies insights on the basis of technologies the global market for biomass power has been further categorized into combustion gasification and anaerobic digestion in terms of revenue 
The combustion segment dominated the market in 2021 and accounted for the maximum share of more than 88% of global revenue. The trends is expected to continue in the future with the segment registering the steady growth. The rate of forecast period biomass feedstock is directly combusted in a furnace with air to convert water into steam. The product steam is used to derive a steam turbine to generate electricity. The combustion technology has a non-complex operation and operates at a lesser cost compared to the advanced biomass power technologies. This is expected to drive the demand of for combustion technology in the market over other available technologies. Biomass power can be used for power generating, lighting, heating and cooking gas applications. These factors are expected to boost the growth of the anaerobic digestion technology segment over the forecast period. However, the gasification of Technology segment is estimated to register the fastest CAGR over the forecast period. Now the next is feedstock insights. On the basis of feedstock, the global market has been further segmented into solid biofuels, liquid biofuels and biogas. In terms of revenue, the solid biofuel segment accounted for the maximum revenue share of 85.5% in 2021. The segment will expand further at a steady CAGR retaining its leading position throughout the forecast period. The easy availability and low cost of solid biofuel shape resulted in the higher adoption over liquid biofuel and biogas for power generation applications. On the other hand, the liquid biofuel segment is projected to record the fastest growth rate during the forecast period. The biogas segment accounted for the second largest market share in terms of revenue in 2021 owing to its higher calorific value and ability to produce and utilize in remote areas. The segment is expected to grow at a steady growth rate during the forecast period. Biogas is majorly composed of methane and carbon dioxide which is produced by the process of anaerobic digestion and it can be also produced through the thermal process of solid biofuels. Biomass power can be utilized for various applications such as power generation, heating and cooking. Now let us understand India's market of biomass power. So India is a major force in the global energy economy. Energy consumption has more than doubled since 2000 propelled upward by a growing population soon to be the world largest and a period of rapid economic growth. Near universal household access to electricity was achieved in 2019, meaning that over 900 million citizens have gained an electrical connection in less than two decades. So India continued industrialization and urbanization will make huge demand of its energy sector and its policy maker. Energy uses on per capital basis is well under half the global average and there are widespread difference in energy use and the quality of service across state and between rural and urban areas. The affordability and reliability of energy supply are key concern for India's consumers. The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted India's energy's use. Our Updated assessment shown an estimated fall of about 5% in the country's energy demand in 2020 due to lockdown and related restrictions, with coal and oil use suffering the biggest fall. The pandemic has also hit investment in the energy sector which fell by an estimated 15% in 2020. In particular among India's electricity distribution companies, how long the impact last will depend on how quickly the spread of the virus is brought under control and on the policy responses, the recovery strategies that are put in place, over 80% of India's energy needs are met by three fuels like coal, oil and solid biomass. Coal has underpinned the expansion of electricity generation and industry and remains the largest single fuel in the energy mix. Oil consumption and imports have grown rapidly on account of rising vehicle ownership and road transport use. Biomass primarily fuel wood makes up a declining share of the energy mix but is still widely used as a cooking fuel. 
despite recent success in expanding coverage of LPG in rural areas, 660 million Indians have not fully switched to modern clean cooking fuels or technologies. India is the third largest global emitter of CO2, despite low per capita CO2 emission. The carbon intensity of its power sector in particular is well above the global average. Additionally, particular matter emissions are a major factor in air pollution which has emerged as one of the India's most sensitive social and environmental issue in 2019. There were well over 1 million premature deaths related to ambient and household air pollution. Origin of this is biomass. So now we are moving how this biomass is origin. Biomass is a term used in several contexts. In the context of ecology, it means living organism and in the context of bioenergy, it means matter from recently living, but not dead. In the latter context, there are variations in how biomass is defined, like example only from plants or from plants or algae, from plants from animals. The vast majority of biomass used for bioenergy does come from plants. Bioenergy is a type of renewable energy with potential to assist with climate change mitigation. Now we are moving uses in different contexts like ecology biomass, the mass of living biological organism in a given area or ecosystem at a given time. This can be biomass of particular species or the biomass of a particular community or habitant. Biomass energy, it is used for energy production or in other words biological mass used as a renewable energy source. Bioenergy Energy sources derive from biological material like solid fuel from the bioenergy that are solid, biofuels, energy crops, biotechnology. Now we are moving in the biomass is also used as a term for the mass of microorganism that are used to produce industrial products like enzymes and medicines. So bioproduct example of emerging bioproducts or bio based products include biofuels, bioenergy, biochar, starch based and cellulose based ethanol, bio based adhesives, biochemicals, bioplastics etc. Biological water wastewater treatment in biological wastewater treatment processes such as the activated sludge process, the term biomass is used to denote the mass of bacteria and other microorganisms that break down pollutants in wastewater. The biomass forms part of sewage sludge, others like biomass satellite on earth observation satellite. Now what is biomass? Organic matter produced by recently living plants and their derivatives include forest residue, crops, crop residue, energy crops, animal manure etc. The plants products their own energy to sustain their day to day lives through process called photosynthesis. Energy from sunlight is used to convert water from the soil and CO2 from the atmosphere into simple sugars which are the con converted into complex starch from energy storage or into cellulose and hemocellulosis. Hence biomass can be classified as indirectly stored solar energy. There are three plants elements of plant growth photosynthesis, respiration and transpiration. Photosay respiration might occur at time under high light and heat condition. Photosynthesis, the process by which green plants and certain other organisms transform light energy into chemical energy. During photosynthesis is green plants, light energy is captured and used to convert water, carbon dioxide and minerals into oxide and energy rich organic compounds. It would be impossible to overestimate the importance of photosynthesis in the maintenance of life on earth. If photosynthesis ceased, there would soon be little food or other organic matter on earth. Most organism would disappear and in the time earth's atmosphere would become nearly devoid of gaseous oxygen. The only organism able to exist under such conditions would be Systematic bacteria which can be utilized the chemical energy of certain inorganic compounds and thus are not dependent on the conversion of light energy. Energy produced by photosynthesis carried out by plants millions of years ago is responsible for the fossil fuel that is our coal, oil and gas that power industrial society. In past ages 
green plants and small organism that feeds on plant increased faster than they are consumed and then their remains were deposited in earth crust by sedimentation and other geological processes. They are protected from oxidation. These organic remains were slowly converted to fossil fuels. It means energy efficiently by photosynthesis is about 6.8 percent. So, now we are moving what is respiration. So, it is a metabolic process that occurs in all organisms. It is a biochemical process that occurs within the cell of organisms. In this process, the energy is produced by the breakdown of glucose which is further used by cells to perform various functions. Every living species from a single celled organism to dominant multicellular organism perform respiration. It is the opposite of photosynthesis where the stored carbohydrates are oxidized to produce energy. This energy is used for cell growth and building new tissues. Now, we are moving to the types of respiration. So, there are two types of respiration, anorbic respiration. It is a type of cellular respiration that takes place in the presence of oxygen to produce energy and it is a continuous process that takes place within the cells of animals and plants. So, this process can be explained with the help of chemical equation that is glucose plus oxygen it gives us the carbon dioxide plus water and energy atmospheric condition. Anorbic respiration it is a type of cellular respiration that takes place in the absence of oxygen to produce energy. The chemical equation for anorbic respiration is glucose it gives alcohol plus carbon dioxide and energy. Then we are moving in the transpiration the biological process by which the water is lost in the form of water vapor from the aerial plants of the plants. Like all living organism plants also require an extra tree system to discharge excess water from their body. This process of elimination of excess water from the plant body is known as transpiration. It is generally the evaporation of water from the surface of the leaves. During the process of transpiration, water molecules in the plant tissue are removed from the aerial parts of the plants. Only a small amount of water absorbed by the plant is utilized in growth and development. The rest is eliminated in the form of transpiration. It is responsible for transporting minerals from soil throughout the plants and cooling the plant through evaporation, moving sugar and plants chemicals, maintaining the cell pressure, pressure exerted by fluid in a plant cell. So, there needs to be a delicate balance between the three processes for a plant to grow and be healthy. Now, we are moving what are the factors affecting transpiration in the plants. So, different factors affecting the rate of transpiration are the first cellular factors. The cellular factors affecting the rate of transpiration are the orientation of leaf, the water status of the plant, structural peculiarities of the leaf, total number and distribution of stomata in a leaf. Then we are moving in the environmental factors like the environmental factors affecting the rate of transpiration are light, humidity, temperature, atmospheric pressure wind speed or we can say velocity. So, relative humidity the amount of water vapor present in the air at a particular time and temperature is expressed as a percentage of the amount required for saturation at the same temperature. The rate of transpiration is inversely proportional to relative humidity. More the relative humidity less is the transpiration rate. The second point is temperature. A high temperature lowers the relative humidity and opens the stomata even in darkness. As a result, the rate of transpiration increases. The third one is light. The stomata open during the day and close in the dark. Presence of light is directly proportional to the rate of transpiration. The fourth point is air. If the air is still, the transpiration rate is slow or we can say low. This is because the water vapor accumulates around the transpiring organs and reduce the diffusion pressure deflects of the air. If the air is moving, the saturated air around the leaves is removed and the transpiration rate increases. The next point is water availability. The transpiration rate is directly proportional to the absorption of water by the roots from the soil. A decrease in water absorption causes the closure of stomata and wilting thereby reducing the rate of transpiration. 
The surface area of the leaves is also one of the factor. A leaf having more surface area will show more transpiration rate than the leaf with a lesser surface area. Now we are moving in the biomass sources. Biomass comes from a variety of sources. Some of the different types of biomass examples are like agricultural residues. These are the biomass source or material that are left in agriculture field or orchard after the crop harvesting. The residue include stubble like leaves, stems, stalks and seed pods. These residues are used as biomass for bioenergy production, animal waste. Animal waste is an important source of nutrients and renewable energy and it is also available and valuable biomass feedstock. Animal waste has chemical energy stored in it just like plants and when it is burned, it releases bioenergy in the form of heat and fuel. Animal waste are generally the execrated materials from living animals and can also include hairy, straw, organic debris and wood shavings. Then forestry residue, it is the residue which is left over from logging operations that may include branches, treetops, sawdust and stumps. This can be obtained in two forms including primary forestry residue and secondary forestry residue. Forest residue comprise of branches, tops and unchangeable wood left over cleaning, final felling or thinning of forest stands. Then wood waste, it is the portion of the waste stream which comprise discarded wood products, stumps, whole trees or burnt branches obtained during the park or street maintenance. Therefore, a vast portion of wood waste can be collected to use as biomass and bioenergy production. The next is industrial waste. It is defined as the waste which is generally by manufactured or industrial processes. It includes a variety of waste including dirt, gravel, cafeteria garbage, concrete and machinery scrap metals and oil solvent trash, chemicals, wood, weed, grass trees, etc. A careful selection of the industrial waste to generated bioenergy is advised for prevention to bad impact on human health. So municipal solid waste and sewage, it is also known as trash or garbage. It is the everyday items that we use and throw away such as grass, clippings, furnitures, clothing, newspapers, appliances, paints, batteries, products, packaging, kitchen waste and others also. So sewage sludge is a type of wastewater produced from a severe and treatment plants. All of these are used for as biomass feedstock for bioenergy production. Now we are moving on the biomass conversion process. It means the control combustion when separated from other solid waste and used for producing electricity or heat. In general, biomass to energy conversion technologies have to deal with feedstock that can be highly variable in mass and energy, density, size, moisture, content and intermittent supply. Therefore, modern industrial technology is often hybrid fossil fuel or we can say biomass technologies that use fossil fuel for drying, preheating and maintaining fuel supply when the biomass supply is interrupted. It can also convert into other forms that are beneficial such as methane gas and transportation fuel such as biodiesel and ethanol. Methane gas is an important component of biogas and it is obtained from agriculture waste, garbage and other organic waste which is decomposed in specially digestionic digester. It can be also be obtained from landfills. Biomass conversion is a shared area between hydrogen products and biogas production. It is a similar to coal gasification in terms of converting the original resource to a hydrogen containing gas at high temperatures without combustion. The research in this direction is mostly concentrated on steam gasification, entrained flow gasification, application of thermochemical cycles or conversion of ethanol and bio oil. Generally, biomass gasification is not as easy as coal and has side products that include hydrocarbon compounds. To reduce the emission of carbon compounds, an extra step is required to catalytically 
capture the generated hydrocarbons through the biomass conversion. So, now we are moving on the advantages of this uh, biogas. The first renewable source for the last couple of centuries, the world has heavily relied on fossil fuels such as coal and oil for industry, transport and to power our homes. These resources are finite. Simply put, once we exploit the world's fossil fuels resources, it will be impossible to get any more. Furthermore, this point may be closer that you think. Scientists predicts that at our current rates of consumptions, we will run out of known reserve of oil by 2052, gas by 2060 and coal by 2090. Clearly, this is not sustainable. So, we need to find renewable source of energy. One of the advantage of biomass is the fact that is it, it is renewable. Biomass, whether wood, plants or animal materials can be sourced over and over again. It making it a renewable resources. It is considerable a renewable source of energy as compared to other forms of energy. This is mainly due to the raw material that is used which is available throughout its purchase and redevelopment are easy. The second advantage, it is cheaper. Production of biomass energy are comparatively cheaper than fossil fuels. The raw material is available cheaply and hence the low cost of electricity generation reduces the bills of the common man. This makes biomass energy more attractive. Third variety of products, biomass can be used to create different products such as methane, gas and biodiesel among other types of fuels. It can also be used to produce secondary forms of energy such as heating, steam turbines to generate electricity. Then biomass energy is versatile as it produces so many products. Biomass can be converted into various forms, presence and absence of oxygens. Some of the byproducts are ethanols, biogas, syn syngas, bio oils and biochar. Additionally, biomass is a more reliable source of energy than fossil fuels, especially as the latter are getting more and more scarce. While the international community is increasingly relying on exploratory drilling and mining to find new sources of coal and oil. The next advantage, it is carbon neutral. Another one of the advantage of biomass is that when used for fuel, it is a carbon neutral process. Although carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases are emitted through combusting, processing or otherwise using biomass. This is believed to be offset by the carbon absorbed by the plants forest grown to create the raw materials. This claim relies heavily on the European Union classifying biomass as a carbon neutral form of energy under their emissions. However, there is a growing argument including within the European scientific community that biomass is not carbon neutral. Even industry leaders have admitted that not all types of biomass are carbon neutral. Other argue that although biomass is often not carbon neutral, when used for fuel, it is a low carbon fuel that produces less carbon pollutants than fossil fuel. Even if biomass can be favorably compared to fossil fuels in this regard, there are no contest when it comes to cleaner forms of renewable energy. Furthermore, unregulated burning and dumping of organic material can cause land, water and air pollutions. For example, wood will break down quickly and cleanly in a natural environment, but in landfill it takes longer to de decompose and when it does, it gives off the greenhouse gas methane. You can recycle wood and other organic materials, but it is not always easy to do. Using these materials as a fuel in another way to keep them out of landfill by giving people an economic incentive to do so which is yet another of the advantage of biomass. Now we are moving on the disadvantages of the using biomass. It generates harmful emissions for biomass to be used as fuel. It usually needs to be processed first. These processes generate varying amounts of carbon dioxide or damaging greenhouse gas. Further harmful emissions are generated when using the biofuel. 
in particular biofuels tends to generate methane a greenhouse that is even worse for the climate than co2 therefore biomass is not really a viable alternative to fossil fuels if we want to curb global warming arguably we did the better of investing in clean renewable forms of energy such as solar wind and hydroelectricity it causes air pollution along with carbon dioxide and methane and it converting and using biomass into fuel can generate a range of pollutant gassing including carbon monoxide nitrogen oxide sulfur dioxide mercury lead pm that is particulate matter styrene formaldehyde hydrochloride acid hydrofluoric acid other hazardous as pollutants so this hazardous air pollutants are a group of 187 toxins that have been closely linked to cancer as well as reproductive problems and birth defects also biodiesel is less efficient than gasoline but it comes on biodiesel products such as ethanol these are arguably less efficient than gasoline meaning that many people are reluctant to use them there is also some evidence that using ethanol can damage combustion engines over a long term furthermore most ethanol based fuel contains some proportion of gasoline so although this is a way to reduce our reliance on fossil fuel and make our current supplies last longer it's not a long term alternative to conclude biomass energy is created by burning or allowing organic matter to decompose so in this process the carbon related into the atmosphere is minimal which is ultimately used by the plants for their life cycle this is how biomass energy works it has more benefits as it is renewable source of energy that can be easily refilled if biomass energy is used appropriate and effectively it also uses electricity will soon become a cheap source of energy more research and technology should be developed to develop biomass energy the government should give incentive to start biomass plants thus this eco friendly should be made more popular which can prove beneficial in the future thank you for watching this video